Now let's look at a different type of line integral. Remember what I've been saying is that you know, it may be called a line integral, but you want to think more curve or path. The line is in the artistic sense where you could just sort of have a path that you draw or trace in two dimensions or in three dimensions. So this particular line integral is going to be to calculate the physics um, aspect of work. So as you might recall from science classes, not all of you necessarily have had this, the calculation for work is basically done by a force multiplied by a distance in metric that would be measured in Newton meters and um, in uh, imperial units it might be called foot pounds or inch pounds those would be units of force times distance Again, we're, we're looking at the calculation aspect of it, less than the phys physics concept. So, imagine we have a path. And there is a vector field that this path goes through. So... Perhaps think of it as a sailboat, and this would represent wind. What we're going to try to calculate is how much work is done by this vector field for a point moving along this path. Um, that sounds like something well beyond our reach without any tools, but I'm going to simplify it down to, to just show you how um, vector tools that we do have can help us get to the simple calculation of force times distance. So let's just isolate a little piece of this picture here. All right, let's zoom in on this. And, you know, we, so we have this section of curve. All right, so that's going to be R of T. That's our path. And then we have this vector of force. I'm just going to call it capital F. And I want to know at this at this point the point is moving along this path. How much of this force is helping the point move along this path. And so let me just draw, uh, uh, let's do it with pencil here. Now our tangent line, think calculus one. Now think earlier this semester to our velocity vector, which is from the first derivative. And let's see if we can't figure out how much of that force is in that direction? Now we're gonna give a name to this vector and it's not a random name, it's a well thought out name. Um, I'm gonna call it capital T and if that gives it away, fantastic. If not, be patient, I'll, I'll get to you. So I'm gonna ask this question, how much of force F is in the direction of that vector I'm calling T. Once I can determine this, I'll have half of that calculation. I'll have the force. The distance the distance won't be so difficult, and I'll come back to a little bit, a little bit later. 
not too long. So the answer to this question has to do with projections. We are going to project F onto T. The magnitude of this vector is our force component. Oops, period here. Projection is what lets you determine how much of a vector is onto another vector. It involves a little bit of right triangle trigonometry, and it was a tool um, introduced at the very beginning of the course, or sometimes in trigonometry or courses that come before calculus. Um, now, I kind of don't want to give it away yet, uh, all the details, so I'm going to just sort of pretend that this is all I know. Um, the formula for projection of a vector onto another vector, there's several ways of writing it. It's the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude squared of the vector we're projecting onto times the vector. That makes this a scalar, and this is a vector. Now, let me let you in on the secret, just in case you missed the notation. This vector I nicknamed T was not done accidentally. You have the path or the curve R of T. You have the velocity vector R prime of T, otherwise known as velocity vector. And we have the unit tangent vector, capital T, which is velocity over its magnitude. I'm abbreviating the notation here. Get that? It's a unit vector. This vector here has length 1. That means this calculation here is equal to this because that's length 1. The magnitude is 1. But since this has a magnitude of 1, since this is a unit vector, that makes this is the magnitude of F in the direction of T. I sound a little bit excited. It's kind of fun to be able to prove some of these th these things uh, with mostly using accurate theory right now. There's definitely some physics pieces that I'm not respecting fully, my apologies. Now, that means, let's go back up to the question at the beginning. I have this part of the calculation. I have how much force there is. It's the dot product of something I can calculate if I know the curve and something that I will be given, it turns out. Now distance we're going to call the distance a very small distance. Remember S was our arc length. This would be one small unit of distance on 
our curve or path. So let me show you where we are then. When the dust settles, we're going to come down to a formula. You're going to turn back into calculus robots again. Here is the formula to calculate the work. It won't be very exciting, I know. So here's what I have. Work is force times distance. We have a unit or a, a, an amount of force and a small little distance. So this would be at one little location. That's a force factor along this curve. Remember this is related to the velocity vector, which has to do with the derivative of the curve. So if we sum all of this up over the entire path, over the entire path, we will come out with an integral. And that integral is written force dot product unit tangent vector ds. This would be the sum of all of these uh, little calculations added up. We are very, very, very close to a, what I would call an actual working formula now. Um, in fact, in some books, this could be written as the, the calculation for work in a line integral, just a reminder, or a curve integral or a path integral. Let's do a little bit of a fun calculus here. Eh, it's really kind of algebra. The tangent vector is the velocity vector divided by the magnitude of the velocity vector. And ds, we evaluated before, is the magnitude of the velocity vector with respect to t. Those will reduce, sometimes we call it cancel in English, uh, but it's not really canceled, it's just equal to one. And what we end up with is this, given vector field, derivative of the curve or the path with respect to t. This, my students, is my favorite version. Um, it doesn't have to be your favorite version. You'll see the textbook has two what it calls favorites, but both of them are just uh, alternate variations of this. One looks a little bit shorter, one has a bigger appeal to differential equations, um, but in terms of getting started, I'm going to call this our formula. And in the next video segment, we'll look at maybe finding uh, an actual example to work through.